Welcome to another repair video. Today I am working on a Kubota L3301 that is having fuel supply issues. This video is marked with time code, so if you know this is your problem, jump ahead to the repair. If you don't know if this is your problem, let's get into diagnostics. The first way to tell if you're having fuel supply issues is if you turn the key and it won't start, but the motor is turning over, it likely isn't getting fuel. All a diesel motor needs to run is fuel, air, and compression. If your tractor was running and now it's not running and you didn't blow it up, then it has compression. Our tractor, when we were working it, actually died. It sputtered out and then would not restart. Here is what happened to us. You can see that the water separator is draining faster than it's filling and showing us that there's a fuel supply issue upstream. Originally though, it just died and we didn't know this and it wouldn't restart. We looked at our water separator and it had quite a bit of water so we cleaned that out and then we tried using it again but it had the same issues. If you turn the key though and all you hear is a click, fuel supply is not your issue and it is likely a safety switch. But seeing as you're still watching this video, on to how to fix fuel supply issues. The fuel supply system is on the right hand side of the tractor. We will start with the water separator cup, which is located directly next to the loader. To remove the water separator, you'll undo a slip collar on the top and then pull it out downwards. If it's being feisty, grab a very large flat object and a small hammer and gently tap it to break it free. The fuel supply petcock is located on top of this cup. If you disassemble it and it's not pouring out much fuel, you likely have an upstream issue if your petcock is open. You'll notice the clear line on the side of the cup, which is the maximum limit for water you want in it. Ours was right near it, so we thought this was causing our issue. When you pour it out, be careful not to lose the internal components. Seeing as this wasn't our issue, we're now back in the shop and doing a full fuel system disassembly. To get to the fuel filter, you will remove the right side shroud cover. After removing the shroud, you can remove the fuel filter. We've replaced this before, so I know it's not super tight. If it is super tight, you might need a filter wrench. If you haven't already, remove the water separator cup as described earlier. Next, we will remove the pet cock that feeds the fuel system. This is located directly on top of the water separator cup and only has one bolt holding it to the tractor. After unbolting, grab a pair of vice grips and clamp the fuel line, then remove it from the back of the petcock. Now it's the moment of truth. We have a cup beneath the line, and we unclamp it, and no fuel comes out. Problem solved. There's no fuel, so the motor won't run. To unclog the fuel line, what we're going to do is we're going to take an air compressor with a blowgun and blow air into it. <laughs> Houston, we got fuel yeah. flow. This will push the contaminants upwards, so make sure to unscrew the fuel cap so the pressure has somewhere to go and put something over it, like a paper towel. Now that the fuel is flowing freely, what we don't want to do is just put the gas cap back on, reprime the system. Because that junk is still in the fuel tank, we're going to need to wash the tank out. We remove the bonnet for this, it is absolutely not required. What you need to do is drain the tank. We did this by taking a larger vinyl tube and putting it over the fuel line and draining into a 5 gallon diesel can. Once it got full, clamped the line, grabbed another can until the tank was empty. Once the tank is good and empty, we will add diesel back in in small increments and blow air through the top of the tank to flush out any particles, contaminants, dirt, whatever was clogging the line. Now that you've flushed the tank, your tractor should be good to go after reassembly. I don't advise you reuse the diesel that you emptied the tank with, but if you have to, make sure to use some sort of filter so you don't have this issue again. For reassembly, we will work back to front starting by bolting the petcock on the machine. Once that is attached, you will add the fuel cup. Make sure to put the components back in in their original order. Unless you have a very new fuel filter, I would also advise replacing that. 
before installing a fuel filter, make sure that you fill it with diesel or else you'll have to wait for it to fill when you prime the system, which will take a lot longer than just taking a cup and pouring it in beforehand. Now that you're reassembled, it's time to bleed the fuel system. Turn the petcock to the on position and then you will unscrew a tiny bleeder on top of the fuel filter. After this, turn the key to the on position for around one minute and prime the fuel system. You'll be able to watch the fuel cup fill as you sit there. After the fuel cup is full, I would let it sit for a few more seconds and then shut off the key and close the air bleeder on top of the fuel filter. Once it is full, the manual says to bump up the throttle slightly, turn the key over and let it run. Your tractor should be running and not have any more issues. Make sure that you're using some sort of filter when you're putting diesel in your tractor to prevent this issue going forward. I hope this video helped. If so, let us know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time my Kubota breaks.